everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new on this channel my name is chiso i make tech videos i also document my 20s on this channel and i make self-development videos as well if you're not new really good to have you back so on this video i'm going to be reviewing a couple of tech learning platforms ranging from udacity to udemy to plural sites and all of that tech learning platform that i must have heard about so when i got started in tech there were so many resources I think that's the downside of learning on your own. I'm not here to downplay any platform. I'm just here to tell you like my honest review of what I think of these platforms and how they must have helped me. I'll probably give you guys the best platform I think is top notch. So the first platform I'm going to be talking about is Udacity. One thing I really like about Udacity are their specialized nano degree programs. I know that they must have added a couple of nano degrees now, but back then Udacity had very robust courses aka nano degrees so at that time you can see nano degrees in android development nano degrees in programming nano degrees in artificial intelligence nano degrees in business analytics i mean there were so many nano degrees on university at that time which i found very good now one thing i love about university is the fact that they have very structured resources they have very thought out curriculums if you want to learn. These nano degrees also have instructors that can teach you, instructors that can check your assessment, and also a community of people that are learning with you. So how do I mean? If you go to Udacity now and you go for a nano degree, you're going to have videos that you're going to watch. After those videos, you're going to have assessments that you're going to do. After those assessments, they're going to be checked by your instructors and you're going to get feedback on the kind of project that you've built. It doesn't just end there. You're going to have a community of people that you can learn from, ask questions, and just interact with that most importantly network. So Udacity for me is just like an all-rounder. After your nano degree, you're going to be taking a very huge project. All nano degrees have projects. So you're going to be building that project. Your instructors are going to assess that project and give you feedback on how that project did. One thing, again, I love about Udacity is the fact that they don't have multiple courses. If you want to learn something like cloud engineering, for instance, or data engineering, you're going to see one course for that topic. And this is something that's not really common with other learning platforms, which makes it very easy for someone that's learning to easily pick the one to do. So I would highly recommend this nano degree to anybody, but it also has its downsides. These nano degrees are very, very expensive and sometimes hard to purchase, especially when you're in Nigeria. Udacity also has a very limited number of free content. So if you're looking for freebies, please don't go to Udacity except you have your money. So if you're currently in Nigeria and like the, the legal tender is Naira, when you have like a Udacity nano degree course going for 300 and something dollars in a month and you have to pay that per month within six months or within four months, of course they give you a discount. So when you convert that money 300 or something dollars to Naira, you see that the money is a lot and most people do not really have that kind of resource to pay for a nano degree. So as much as Udacity is one of my best learning platforms, it's quite expensive and it's not everybody that has the capacity to pay for those kind of resources. Next learning platform I would like to talk about is Plural Sight. <laughs> Me personally, I don't think I really like Plural Sight that much. I don't really have a reason. But I'll give a little bit of backstory. When I was learning Android development and I was thinking of taking the Associate Android Developer exam, Plural Size was one of the um, platforms that had like those kind of courses boxed together. But the reason why I do not like Plural Size is the fact that there are a lot of resources. Plural Size, I think that's a good thing for some people. But the good and bad side about Plural Size is that you have a couple of resources you have thousands of things to pick from and someone that is just starting out you won't really know they want to start learning another good thing plural site also does is the fact that they bundle their courses together so if you have multiple courses on that one topic plural sites will give you like a bundle of all those courses and call it a roadmap and sometimes these courses might be ranging from 72 to 80 videos which for me is a lot so plural site offers a wide range of it courses software development courses AI courses, technical content on plural sites is really, really good. Plural sites is also good for staying up to date with industry trends and just trying to upskill. And the con is that plural sites is a little bit expensive. It's not as expensive as a university nano degree, but plural sites is a little bit expensive for someone that is just starting up, someone that doesn't really have a lot of funds. Also, plural sites is not as interactive as Udacity. Plural sites 
does not have a community. Dora side does not really lay a lot of emphasis on like project development and you maybe submitting assessments and all of that. So Dora side is a good library if you want to just pick things. Let's say I want to learn something like PySpark and easily go to Dora side, watch a few videos, and I'm good to go. So for me, Dora side is. I don't want to be biased, I'm not going to give like an over five. Another learning platform that is very, very popular is Udemy. Udemy has a vast, vast range of courses and resources. Udemy's library is so huge. As a creator and as someone that is in the tech industry, I can easily go to Udemy now and create a course and upload it there. So that's how other creators and instructors are also uploading their courses on Udemy. So one thing I like about Udemy is there's nothing that you actually want to learn that someone hasn't created a course on. Udemy is affordable too when it comes to the pricing and the good thing about Udemy is that they give discounts once in a while. You can come to Udemy and see that they're giving a 90% discount for a course that you want them to buy. Udemy also offers lifetime access to every course that you buy, unlike other platforms like Udacity or Pluralsight. Udemy, you can easily access these courses and it's not really based on like subscription models. One other thing about Udemy, the bad side of Udemy is that as much as there are a lot of courses, you won't really know the one that is quality. I don't think Udemy has done a good job in actually vetting the kind of instructors they allow on their platform. You can see some courses that are really good. You can also see some courses that are not too good. So the quality of courses on Udemy is something that I personally question and it's why I don't really use the platform so much. One other thing I don't like about Udemy is the fact that you won't really know the course to take because there are multiple courses on that one topic. If I want to learn data engineering for AWS for instance, I can bet you that if I go to Udemy, I will see 20 courses for data engineering on AWS. You have to do a lot of work in reviewing these courses, reviewing their rating, reviewing their comments to make sure that you're paying and you're paying for something that will be worth your money and something that will give you value. So as much as Udemy is very vast when it comes to resources, it's cheap, you can still have access to those resources. You still have to spend time to vet the quality of the courses and also to vet the quality of instructors you're taking these courses from. Another tech learning platform I love to talk about is Educated. If you know me, you know that I'm an Educated fan girl because when I was prepping for coding interviews, when I was learning about system design, data structures and algorithms, Educative came through for me. Educative is really nice because it's interactive. Educative has an inbuilt interactive coding platform and I would recommend Educative if you're learning how to code from scratch. If you're learning how to code in Python, Java, C Sharp, I would recommend Educative. Educative is very structured. Educative has um, a very good way of seeking their instructors, you're getting the best from the best. Educative also emphasizes learning by doing. So even if you're done with a particular exercise, they're going to give you a couple of other exercises to do, which is really nice. Educative has seasoned courses in data structures and algorithms. So if you're preparing for an interview and you're looking for a way to practice good data structures and algorithm questions in JavaScript, Java, Python, C Sharp, you should definitely check out Educative. Now, if you're someone that prefers to buy a course and just keep it, Educative is not for you because if you want to stay active on a particular course on Educative, you have to constantly be paying the monthly fee which is the subscription model that most of these platforms use. Other cons is the fact that Educative is not so extensive. You can only find limited courses on Educative. You can find things around system design, data structures and algorithms, software development, especially when it comes to learning how to code from scratch. Educative has those very simplified basic courses, so you should definitely check Educative out. Another tech learning platform that I would love to talk about is DataCamp. DataCamp is known for its wide range of resources when it comes to data-focused learning. When I stay in my new role, if you don't know already, I'm a software engineer, but my role involves me doing things around big data and building data systems. So DataCamp was one of the resources that really helped me to upskill in that area. DataCamp has specialized courses in data science, data engineering, and data analytics as well. Another good thing about Data Camp is the fact that they're going to drill you. Data Camp is also as interactive as Educative, where you have like um, coding platforms inbuilt into the platform where you can code, write code, like 
the code compiles on that same platform and you can easily run your code and the good thing is it also specifies a good learning path for data roles like data science data analytics and data engineering as well so if you're someone in the data space and you're looking for a platform that is specifically for data professionals data camp is one platform i feel and i'm so sure that you should check at the end of the day you're going to be building projects that will be assessed by instructors before they can give you a certificate or before you can finish the course completely so the cons of data come to other people is the fact that it only has specified or it only has courses that are specified for data professionals which most people don't find a problem with that and also the fact that it doesn't really have a variety of courses let's say you want to learn something like github in depth, you want to learn something like DevOps. In depth, you won't really find those kind of courses on Data Camp. You most likely check somewhere else. So for me, Data Camp is a big ten over ten. If you're in the data space and you're thinking of upskilling in any of those areas, another tech learning platform I love to talk about is Code Academy. Can I end this video without talking about Code Academy? Because when I started learning how to code in HTML, CSS, Code Academy was one of those resources that I actually used. Code Academy is like data camp and educative where they have like those compilers and those coding environments embedded into their browser. So you don't need to download extra tools to actually use the platform because those things are already there. Code Academy has a wide range of resources, especially if you're just starting out learning how to code. This is a tool or this is a resource that I would highly recommend. I think what cuts it for most people is the fact that Code Academy is very interactive. I'll take HTML and CSS, for example, when I was learning, you can build and write HTML, CSS, and you can compile that and see the output of your web design. So if you're looking for any interactive platform that's really good, Code Academy is something that I would really love you to check out. I'm not sure they have a wide range of resources, but for someone that just gets it started, you'll definitely find what you need on that platform. Another tech learning platform I love to talk about is Coursera. Coursera has specialized platforms for different companies like microsoft google edx all come together to develop courses or to develop content for coursera to sell to students or to display for students to watch now coursera is really good but in terms of costing coursera has like a financial aid if you're a student you can get courses or you can get the specific courses on Coursera if you have like a financial aid for me personally coursera doesn't really just cut it for me I personally find Coursera boring, mm, except I'm doing or I want to take a course from a university or I want to take like a research course. Coursera would most likely be my last option personally because of the kind of learning style I have. Coursera is also good because they give you time to do like assessments. Me personally, I don't think I ever finished the courses I started on Coursera, but I know people that did analytics courses on Coursera, I know people that did engineering courses on Coursera, networking courses on Coursera that enjoyed it but me personally I did not enjoy it. So if you're someone that wants to have structured learning, Coursera also offers that and if you're also someone that loves community um, assessment and just doing like hands-on projects, Coursera is something that can also help you do that. Now I'm going to end this video without talking about YouTube. YouTube is like the the grandmaster when it comes to resources. YouTube is the universal meetup point for different kind of courses. YouTube has a vast range of topics depending on what you want to learn. What I love about YouTube is that it is free. You're not paying any money aside from the data that you're buying. YouTube is everybody's go to when it comes to learning when it comes to learning things really quick one platform i really love on youtube is free code camp free code camp has a couple of resources on youtube that is ranging from four hours to five hours or even six hours where you can learn things at a stretch but you have like a very structured learning path so the downside of youtube is that there are a lot of things to learn you can get overwhelmed and you would be confused knowing exactly what to learn so let's say i want to start a career in cloud engineering for instance i just literally need to go on youtube and search for cloud engineering i'm going to see 1000 videos talking about cloud engineering now as much as there's a good side of youtube that's also a downside youtube has a variety of courses but most of the time you're not sure of the one to take and you're not sure of the quality of the kind of information that you're absorbing because 
just anybody can make a video so sometimes quality of the content that you're consuming might be questioned youtube also has a lack of structured learning for comprehensive education if i want to learn something i'm seeing devops here i'm seeing backend here i'm seeing github here i don't know they want to learn first so that can also be a problem youtube also has a uh, lack of interactive learning like other platforms where you can have a community the highest thing you can get on youtube is like the comment section except the instructor has like a discord channel that redirects you to where the community is so other learning platforms that i love to talk about will be books reading books reading articles reading documentations but ultimately the choice of platform that you choose depends on your learning style depends on the money that you have and it also depends on the kind of skill that you want to acquire so it's often better to explore like a combination of all of these platforms to be beneficial to you so guys we've come to the end of this video i do hope that i've been able to give you guys a brief overview of these tech learning platforms so if you're watching this video and you love to learn a tech skill please check out any of these platforms i have the link in my comment section and also if you've used any of these learning platforms let me know in the comment section and let me know your best learning platform and let me know your worst learning platforms thank you for watching this video guys i'll see you in the next video bye